Hi everybody. Um, Josh, can I just get you to turn your camera on? Uh, welcome everybody. My name's Jenny Pearson. I'm an Education Officer for the Primary Health Network. Welcome to our webinar today. Uh, our presenter today is Josh Fuller from our Aboriginal Health Access team. And he's uh, been on the road and literally just walked through the door. <laughs> So perfect timing. Um, all right, Josh, um, I'll hand over to you. No worries. Thank you, Jenny. My apologies, everyone, for uh, tuning in a bit late. Um, yeah, yum, everyone. Um, my name is Josh Fuller. Um, like Jenny said, I'm uh, the First Nations Community Engagement Officer for the PHN. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge the country that we're on today, acknowledge our ancestors. Um, I'd like to acknowledge you. And I want people is where I'm at today. I'm, I'm coming to you from Armadale. I'm on the road um, at the moment across the New England. Um, so yeah, I'd like to pay my respects to elders past and present and emerging and pay our respects to all the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander brothers and sisters in the room um, that are joining us today. Um, yeah, so we, just going to go on to my presentation. So today is a First Nations Health um, information session. So basically what it is, is we're going to let you guys know what we can do for um, your service. And if you would like our team to come out and have a chat and, and talk about um, is, is, your, is your service culturally safe? Is it um, attracting mob? Is it... Um, you know, engaging with your local community of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander um, people, so our First Nations people in your community, is that happening properly? Like I said, Yama earlier, um, we've done the welcome. So the contents today is we're going to talk a bit about our artwork, um, who we are, what we can do to help. We're going to talk about our team, um, who makes up our team and what that looks like. Um, our education sessions, our cultural awareness sessions, our ITC, our CTG, uh, cultural safety, why asking the question of ethnicity is so important, what resources we have, and the referral form. So the referral form, so a lot of this stuff um, cross-references our GP sector. So we'll, we'll talk a bit about that and how um, we, we, we can leave a couple of the slides out. To suit um, commission services. Um, so, out of today's session and, and our session, so it's not just today's session, it's about all our sessions. When we come out, um, our team can assist with better learning outcomes in better understanding how first, the First Nations team, the PHN, can support allied health services such as yourselves or um, commission services, better understanding of local Aboriginal history and cultural for each region. So. Each region is different. Um, we all have different nations, different tribes, different clan group names, and even one place in Newcastle could be completely different to another, um, and vice versa anywhere across our region. Um, we have different, yeah, we have different, same, same, but different. Um, better understanding of health priorities and needs of local communities know how to access culturally appropriate resources, better understanding of local First Nations health programs and services. So each, each area and each program will be different depending on where you are. Um, and sometimes they're the same. So it could be um, just a matter of um, having that information on hand to know how best to service your clients in the community. So our... First Nations Health Access team is comprised of five of us. So Christy, Christy Lee Priestley is our First Nations Health Access Manager. Um, I am Josh Fuller, First Nations First Nation Community Engagement Officer. Robbie Watson is our First Nations Health Access Officer. Brief, uh, Robbie's Hunter Mid-Coast. Uh, Brief Foyle is our First Nations Health Access Officer on the Central Coast. And Jamie Lee Norris started this week. She is our access officer in the New England region. 
First Nations South Africa. So, so um, yeah, that makes up our team um, here at PHN. So the guys that are in, so Robbie, Bree, and Jamie concentrate on education sessions with GPs practices. Mine is more community, allied health, and commission services when and if needed. Um, and these are some of what we're going to go through today is some of the things that they go out and help um, general practice with. So our branding, our logo, I've got the shirt on today. Um, the, the, the logo um, is an artwork that's been produced by, um, by a rubber boy from the Gomeroy region. Um, it, it signifies, um, you know, the different regions that we cover, different colours, different communities. Um, the artwork references traditional contemporary practices of health, medicine and gathering between communities to share the knowledge, experience and stories for providing better health outcomes. The branding uh, provides an extended visualisation of natural resources and materials that identify the culture, the cultural and modern practices of life in health and sustainability. This includes water, plants, flowers, boomerangs. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, um, our branding. So um, yeah, it's, it represents our whole region, not just one region. Um, and it represents everything that comes together. So um, the use of natural tools such as Kuhlman, Inside the logo are a number of patterns and images that reference water plants, flowers, boomerangs, stones, which are used for sustaining life and food sources. Um, so some of the things our health access officers help general practice with is our dashboard report, so our quality improvement stuff, um, cultural safety, so making sure their premise, their premises is culturally safe, or if it's not, why isn't it? Is it is it the community um, that doesn't um, associate that place being safe culturally, or is it um, it's not welcoming? Is is the, is it very clinical? Is it very um, is it very clinical with you know a clinical space like a hospital? Is it very um, uninviting for mob to go in there, or is it, is it too daunting? Um, things like that. Um, the, also, they help with the 715 assessment and referral opportunities out, community health promotion opportunities um, to empower and support Aboriginal communities to meet better health outcomes um, and linking providers to local health services, for example, the community service directories. Um, so some of the available education sessions that we have for um, is our cultural safety stuff, like I said. What are the common barriers for mob accessing your service? Um, is your service a mainstream service? Um, is there a risk factor? Um, how do we address these? Is there, you know, we need to dive, dive deeper into what cultural safety is for your, your service and if it is um, culturally safe for mob and if it's not, why? There's, there's, there's many different questions and many different factors in how we determine that um, from our team. Um, we don't have all the answers, but we can find them out for you. Um, asking the question, understanding why we asked um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander patients' ethnicity, um, how to ask that question appropriately. Um, it's because at the end of the day, it's data. We want to gather data. We want to know where mob are. We want to know if they're accessing your service. We want to know if your service is uh, First Nations specific and if um, your community is accessing your service. Um, many questions come when that question is asked. We want to know, um, basically we want, we want the data and we want the data to back us to say yes, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are using this service, this is specifically for them and this is why, da 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 da. Um, understanding that allied help referral coming from general practices as well. So um, if you're um, getting referrals from a GP, um, understanding that. Um, and, and, and the ITC program too, developing, 
develop an increased understanding of the ITC care program on how it relates to allied health. So the ITC program is different in different areas, different um, services have it in a few different areas, but um, they can get support with care coordination who will work with clients to coordinate their appointments to meet their health goals. Transport to medical appointments. Transport's a big thing for mob, especially with chronic disease, is it's getting to and from their appointment. Having that person with them constantly to be able to, you know, be there with for support, but also communicate what's happening in each appointment, making sure that they they are talking with their health professionals and being honest with, with them about what's actually happening in their in their life and in their um, current situation because we want the best outcome for, for mom. Um, even assistance with the gap payments for private specialists and allied health providers, um, medical aid, purchase and support. Aboriginal outreach workers will help clients get to their appointments, help understand what the clinic, clinic clinician or health worker is saying and to put them in touch with culturally appropriate health and community services. So like I said, um, different providers in different regions. So ITC providers in the Hunter is the Hunter Primary Care in Newcastle, Yaron on the Central Coast, Viripai AMS in Taree, Healthwise in Tamworth, Tobwaba in Foster, and Ungaroo in Singleton. Sorry guys, I just had a quick drink. Um, so yeah, our impacts on our First Nations health, we look at the gap and it just keeps getting bigger, but we have a lot behind that and, and there's a lot of things that contribute to mob not accessing health services. A lot, a lot of it is historical, a lot of it's passed down, a lot of it is um, a range of different things, you know, um, distrust towards non-Indigenous people and services because of, you know, past things that have happened or, or um, past things that have happened generationally through through um, family and, and mob um, experience and judgment or racism, um, especially in areas mob that want to access certain services because they've experienced or somebody that they know has experienced it or even just word of mouth because a lot of mob talk to one another and we all communicate, don't go down there because, you know, they're racist or they, they're down there judging on you and they're going to tell everyone your business and everybody's going to know. Um, you need to um, have an understanding if that's out in the community, how do we bring that back? How do we get that um, reputation back to our service so mob can access our service properly? Um, identity issues, um, a lot of mob aren't willing to identify as Aboriginal because of past policies that have happened for the years around um, people knowing um, that they are Aboriginal. One example that I have when I was growing up, so I'm, I'm, I'm a proud Tabago man from Dubbo, but we had an old lady that lived across the road and my grandmother used to send me across the road all the time to get some tea or sugar or an egg or something that she was short on until payday. And she'd say, go and ask the dot across the road. And I didn't know um, old Arnie across the road. Um, I always thought she was Indian. I said, and why is she Indian? Uh, how do you know that old Indian lady man? She said, she's not Indian, son. she's Aboriginal. She just, she wore the whole um, Indian dress and, and um, everything just because she was worried about her kids um, being taken away by the welfare, by, by taken away by um, by docs because she was Aboriginal, and then her kids and her grandkids had identity issues growing up and still do today because not knowing who um, they were at a young age and their grandmother identifying as Indian, but they're actually Aboriginal. Um, you know, a lot of our families took on different. Um, identities because of that stigma and that um, that stolen generation and then that past policies that are happened. So people identify as 
um, everything but Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander. Let's say they were Kiwi, let's say they were, you know, um, Italian, Lebanese, or let's say anything but but um, be true to who they who they are and who their identity were because of the past policies. And then that filters down through the generation where people don't know their identity and are still finding out today who they who they are or or um, have trouble identifying that to people to say that they are because of that. Um, high rates, of, and again, that comes with high rates of depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress, suicide, chronic conditions. So a lot of that stuff um, contributes to that. Um, and then there's a lot of other factors also that is intergenerational. Low, low health literacy, um, Check out our podcast, Coffee on Country. We're trying to um, start with health literacy and help mob understand that there's all these services out there, what these services do. Um, we want that to be a big part of the PHN and what we, we are trying to, um, what I am trying to do as a First Nations Community Engagement Officer is trying to help mob understand there's all these different services out here and this is what they do um, and this is how you know, we look after our health and we look after each other by, by accessing these services. Overrepresentation in the criminal justice system, unaware of health services in the mainstream and primary care, poor access to private specialists and allied health, fear of shame talking about health to non-Indigenous people. And that goes back to, to the trust thing, you know, um, mob, automatically trust mob, but when they have to talk to somebody that's not, they, it's very tricky and it's very hard for some people to engage. Um, so closing the gap, like we said, it keeps getting bigger, but this is how it started. It started on February 13th, 2008. Uh, the new elected Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd, made a formal apology to Australia, to Australia's First Nations people, particularly the stolen generation who lived whose lives had been blighted by the past government policies of forced child removal and Indigenous assimilation. It was witnessed by thousands of people gathered in Canberra for the event and was broadcast all over the country. It was a powerful and memorable moment in the nation's history. The apology cleared the air, inspiring Australians to believe we can really build the kind of respectful relationship needed for positive long-term outcomes. Um, yeah, so like I said, I've already touched on a lot of intergenerational things that have come from um, that that time in Australia's history and it's been passed down for generations upon generations and that's why we still have a lot of um, problems in our communities. Um, what is cultural safety support? Cultural safety, what does it look like? Um, I've already touched on this. Um, we can help provide resources, help in making your space culturally safe for First Nations people. Cultural safety is about shared respect, shared meaning, and shared knowledge, basically. Um, so some of the yeah, significant date calendars that we have, um, culturally safe environment, cup of pamphlets. So these are old ones. We have updated ones at the moment. Um, each session will contain all the resources on each subject matter. Help with your service to better engage support um, and welcome First Nations people. How to better communicate and support First Nations patients. What services are available in your community? What, what services can we re refer out to stuff that you can't help or they, your clients need help with? So yes, so some of these are different types of, um, again, resources that we have and we'll bring them out when and if needed, when we came, come out and have a chat with your service as, um, as needed. Also have, so these are pretty outdated. We're in the process of updating these um, service directories uh, for the Hunter New England and the Central Coast. Um, how can we support your practice? Again, this is more around um, GPs, but we can look at um, having a chat about cultural safety, asking them a question, 
have a bit more of the yarn around the ITC program if you are unaware of it. Um, yeah, that's that's it. Thanks very much for your time today. Um, hope you found information um, useful and yeah, please shoot us a buzz, shoot us um, a email and we can get out and come and see us and have a chat and sit down and have a cup and have a yarn. Do we, um, do we go into question time now? Well, let me check the chat. Any questions? Any questions in the chat? Hi, Josh. No, there isn't. Have you finished? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, thanks everyone um, for attending. We have actually just had a question come through from Joe Lavelle. Uh, yep. Joe said, who is best to contact for a visit for an allied health facility in the New England? Uh, do we, I think we have a I want to on our webpage, on the Power 10 webpage. Yeah, so that'll be um, sent out in the email from this, I think, but if not, um, yeah, I'll be it'll be me or Christy. Just give us a buzz, and we can organise. Um, I think that'll be me. Okay. Like stuff. Yeah. Yep, I've got um, Joe's contact details, so I'll pass them on to you, and you can flicker an email. Awesome. Um, anybody got anything else that they would like to ask before we wrap up? It doesn't look like it. Um, anytime uh, you can always um, contact me, they've all got my email, or um, if you have a look on our website, you'll see the email for the Aboriginal Health Access Team. Um, I have got another quick couple of questions that have just come through. Uh, one from Vicky. Josh, do you have any contacts in Cessnock for care finder el eligible clients? I do, yeah. Yeah, if you want to flick me an email, um, can I? Can I'm I well, this going. Go, go I'm just going to reply. Thought. I'm just yep. going to put your email in and send it yep. to everyone, and awesome. they can um, contact you. Send yep. it all. Uh, Casey said thanks very much, Josh, and Vicky said yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a very hard town to get outreach. Says not. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of in between, like um, you've got Ungaroo or what we call, and then you've got Mindy River. Like it's it's sort of, yeah, it's very, um, yeah, it's hard. A little bit stuck in the middle. It is, yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, Josh. Sorry, we were a few minutes late. Josh did a fantastic job racing up the stairs to get here. Um, and I was busy working away and didn't realise that you'd finished. <laughs> so fantastic. All right, thanks everybody. And um, I'll see you next time. Thank you. Yo.